We all know a piece of jazz when we hear it. So what is the characteristics that we hear that are initially identified to us that this is a piece of jazz rather than a piece of rock or pop or Latin or whatever? Well, today I'd like to look at those characteristics. I'll start by playing a little bit on the drums for you that use some of the rhythmic building blocks, some of the things that we immediately identify as it being a piece of jazz. And then afterwards, with some analysis, a little explanation, hopefully we'll set you on the road to understanding a little bit more how the music is made. commonly hear when jazz is being described are swung eight notes, accidents in two and four, syncopation and of course improvisation. Now let's have a look at these individually. We begin with the swing eighth notes. Okay we know that eighth notes are doubling up of our quarter note. In other words we have our pulse or our four four bar it goes one two three four and then we double up the speed of that so it would be counted like one and two and three and four and these are known as eighth notes now in the normal eighth note the and is directly in the middle of the beat in other words it divides the beat evenly in two one and two and three and four and these are known as straight eighth notes now one of the things jazz has is swung eighth notes or swing eighth notes and what that actually means is that the and of the beat is not splitting the beat in the middle anymore, but in fact has moved forward, so it's nearer the beat that's coming up. In reality, what we're doing is taking the beat, dividing it in three, a triplet, and playing the first and the third of those triplets. So for example, if our pulse was here, two, and we count triplets, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, we play the one triplet of each of those beats. So it sounds something like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now these could be counted one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. But the thing about that is it's too much of a mouthful. We can still say and, so we get three, four, one and two and three and four and or we can say ah sometimes people like to say one a ah, two a ah, three a ah, four ah now let's hear the difference between straight eight rhythms and swung eight note rhythms straight eight rhythm one and two and three and four and swung eights one a ah, two a ah, three a ah, four a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. Now that swung eighth note is very important to jazz. All the rhythms, all the eighth notes that you see are always played in this manner. It doesn't matter whether you're playing drums, it doesn't matter playing saxophone, or it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing. If you're playing a piece of jazz or swung jazz, the eighth note is approached in this manner. Accents on two and four. This is as it says. We'd like to put a little rhythmic inflection on the second and fourth beat. So if we're counting our four pulses, one, two, three, four, we feel it as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And in fact, if you were clipping your fingers or tapping your foot or whatever, along with the music, then you would do it on beats two and four. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, etc. Now, this can often be implied within the music, but it's not usually 
hit very heavily on the music, but it's always there. The rhythmic emphasis is on the second and fourth beat. As a drummer, we would do this on our hi-hat within the jazz beat, the jazz cymbal beat, which I will talk about again. But if you're at a music club and you're listening to a jazz band play, make sure that you clip your fingers on the second and fourth beat or tap your foot or whatever. If you do it on one and three, it has a completely different feel and in fact will probably annoy other people in the club. And if you're on the bandstand and you put a rhythmic emphasis on one and three, well, I think your jazz career days could end very quickly. Rhythmic syncopation. Now, what that means is that the rhythm is no longer just an even line, like da 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 da, but rather broken up, and with rhythmic emphasis, instead of being on the beat, can be changed to off the beats or up beats or whatever you want to call them. So a syncopated line would be something like this. One, two, three, four. Da 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 ba da 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 bo da 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 ba ba that would be a syncopated line now the syncopation we use in jazz would sound different that didn't really sound like a jazz piece for the simple reason as i didn't use the swing eighth notes i used the straight eight note model so going back to the swing eight notes if i use the same idea in syncopation it's going to sound much closer to what we know as jazz let's listen one two three ba -da. Ba da 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 ba ba da ba ba da da ba 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 da. Notice how that sounds closer to what we would know as jazz than say you know rock because of the way it's swung. Now let's even make it more jazz-like. Instead of clipping my fingers on one, two, three, and four, I'm going to go back and clip it on two and four. So one, two. One, two, three, four. Ba da ba da ba 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 do ba 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 do ba ba do ba 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 do ba 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 do ba ba ba. Now we're into real jazz territory. Even without real pitches or whatever, it still sounds like a piece of jazz music. Now, one of the things that I did there is I made the notes sound legato. And this is very important for what we call jazz phrasing. We have a natural tendency to play long notes on a downbeat, short notes on the upbeat. For example, if I was playing downbeats, two, three, I would go bang, 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 legato, we'd have it a certain length. But if we're playing upbeats, we want to cut the note short. It's a natural tendency, like this, two, three, four. Ba, 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 ba. Now the reason for that is that we want the security of this downbeat. But what we need to do is learn to be able to phrase over that beat. Make the note legato so it goes over the note, over the pulse. Let's hear how that sounds. You'll find that it can be a little bit tricky to do this at first. One, two, three, four. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. So you notice how the note goes over the beat. Now, this is a very important part of jazz, really very important. And a little exercise you can do to help you with this jazz phrasing is do what I just did there with the long note, except now just clip your fingers on the second and fourth beat. So it sounds like that. Two, three, four, one. Bam, 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 two. All right. This is a good exercise. Now you might say to yourself, well, what's the point in this? As a drummer, when I hit my drum, I get a sound. I don't get a length of note. I get a specific sound. Well, it has a real profound effect on the way you phrase. For example, we we have a tendency to rush. It's a general, natural tendency most people have. So, when we've got space between two notes, we get to the next note quicker, and this causes the rushing effect, right? So by thinking of your original note as long rather than short, it reduces the space between the notes and can make us feel a little more laid back or make us play a little more laid back, and this is really important. So, in summation, what are the things that make up jazz? Swung eighth notes, accents on two and four, and syncopation with the legato feel. 
Of course, the improvisation is hugely important and there's an awful lot more that we have to get onto, you know, to really fill in all the, join all the dots, so to speak, to make us sound like a jazz musician. But these are the basic rhythmic fundamentals of jazz. So what I'd like to do the next time is look at these rhythmic fundamentals and put them onto the drum set. Have a look at the jazz ride cymbal beat and how all this applies to it. Okay, see you next time.